Okay, thank you, folks. Thanks so much. Uh, I'm driving out on the expressway, and I see a sign for an Amber Alert. You guys know what an Amber Alert is, right? When a child's gone missing? A lot of information, very detailed. When an adult has gone missing, it's called the Silver Alert. Nobody seems to give a shit. There's no information. It says, like, missing adult. Honda Civic. I'm like, that's it? That's what you're giving us? This is why I think that is. When a man has gone missing, he's very rarely missing. When a woman has gone missing, her husband has killed her. 100% of the time. And you're going to see him on News 12 crying with fake tears. He's going to be like, please, please help me find my wife. I'm like, dude, they're arresting you in like 36 hours. <laughs> Stop it. So I don't cook. I eat out every single night. I eat out seven nights a week. When I try to eat healthy. I find they make it very difficult for you to eat healthy when you have to eat out. Like last night I had a late show. After the show I stopped off at a Dunkin' Donuts. All I wanted was a cup of coffee. They brought out a fresh batch of those little munchkins. So I said to the guy behind the counter, I said, what's the least amount of munchkins I can get? He said, you can get one for 35 cents. I'm like, okay. He's like, or oh, you can get 40 for $1.99. <laughs> I'm a big fan of Chinese food, love Chinese food. You know what I find really weird about a takeout Chinese restaurant? How come every time I go in there, how come there's always a kid in there doing homework? <laughs> and if you're like me and you go to the same takeout Chinese restaurant like year after year, one day you walk in there and now that kid is just behind the counter. I was like, what the hell are you studying all those years? <laughs> My favorite part, they never close. You guys get as excited as I do when you call there during a blizzard and they pick up the phone? They're like, hello, China Inn. I'm like, holy shit, you're open? They're like, pick up on delivery. I'm like, delivery? How the hell are you getting a bicycle down Main Street? I had to go to my dry cleaner recently. I don't understand their business practices. I went in there on Monday. I dropped off two sweaters. The guy's like, all right, you want to pick them up next Friday? I'm like, oh, next Friday. I was kind of hoping tomorrow. He's like, okay, tomorrow. <laughs> I was expecting some kind of counter offer. And now I'm concerned because he's just shaved 13 days right off this process. <laughs> I'm like, dude, you are still cleaning my shit, right? <laughs> I'm not just giving this back to me tomorrow with a plastic bag over it and twist the tie. Well, my niece just turned five years old. She just had a birthday that passed. Very cute kid. You know what I love about kids at that age is that they're completely innocent and they have no filter. They say whatever the hell's on their minds. I'll give you an example. Uh, I live in an old white neighborhood. I got one black guy who lives on my block, like three doors down. His name is Kenny. And sometimes he babysits my niece. So I take my niece to the supermarket, and the guy working behind the cash register is a young black guy. She looks right at him. She's like, hi, do you know Kenny? <laughs> so I was like, oh, I'm sorry, dude. Kenny's just this guy who lives on my block like three doors down. He's like, yeah, I, I know, John. I'm Kenny. I am Kenny. <laughs> up here in Nassau County, Long Island. That's, that's where I was uh, born and raised. And I grew up in a very working class family. I did not have a lot of money when I was growing up. But I had no idea at that time that I didn't have money. I kind of figured it out now, looking back. I used to get my sneakers in the supermarket. It's always a good clue to a metal bin back by the dog food. I couldn't even try them on. They used to have that little plastic handcuff. I just look at how these are. We had the best family trips, even though we didn't have cash. I listen to the kids talk today about where they're going, here in Mexico, the Bahamas. We never did anything like that. Every year, me and my family, we went to Florida, and we never flew. We drove. And we drove in a van. Well, not a van like you guys see today with bucket seats and DVD players. We had a van. Like a plumbing supply serial killer van. My dad used to pull out the seats then throw blankets and pillows onto that hard metal floor. Just stick me and my three brothers into the back. 
We were like immigrants. <laughs> my family like the first Jews being smuggled from New York down to Miami. <laughs> now, if we were good, if we didn't drive my parents crazy, our reward is we got to stop at the halfway point. It's the south of the border, that's right. And you guys took the same ghetto vacation that I took. <laughs> My mother's now 84 years old. She's still driving. I had to take her to get a car recently. It's funny. Here's my mother's only requirement of buying a car. All she cares about is that the car does not come equipped with power windows or power locks. This is her reasoning. She's worried that should she ever drive off a bridge and land in the water, she's like, the power won't work. I had to break it to her. I was like, look, Mom, you're 84 years old now. Is it really going to matter what you drive off a bridge in? She's going to kick out the front windshield and swing to safety. And I'm like, what bridge are you going over? You going to stop and shop? <laughs> and movie night at the library. <laughs> are you taking the Verrazano? <laughs> this is what I do for a living now. I quit my job a year ago to do this full time. All right, thank you very much. <laughs> I had a good job. I was a teacher. Any teachers here? Yeah. I taught uh, kindergarten out here on Long Island. I was terrible at it. But when I started at that point in my life, I didn't even know what a five-year-old was. I remember driving to school my first day. I called my mother from the car. I'm like, Mom, kindergarten, first day. Like, they shit in their pants. They do algebra. What am I looking at? A big perk of teaching kindergarten is the kids are five to six years old. So most of their mothers were like 28. <laughs> I get a little creepy there, what happened? <laughs> I didn't know how to interact with the kids. Like if a kid had used the bathroom, he'd come over, he'd tug on my pants, and be like, Mr. Z, I gotta go potty. I'd be like, you gotta get a buddy. That's the way we do it. That's a big deal being the buddy. There's now 30 kids in the room with their hand up begging to be the buddy. And this one kid, he's got all the power. So he's just working the room, deciding. <laughs> so he picks his little buddy, they go to the bathroom. Now I notice like 25 minutes has gone by. They've never come back. They gotta form a little search party. I can be like, you get a buddy, go find the other two. <laughs> now I'm down four kids. <laughs> what do you do at that point? You dash and two more out, you cut your losses at four, like I don't know. <laughs> I didn't quit because of, uh, of the kids. I quit because the parents were a huge pain in my ass. They were in my room every day. Every single day they were in my room. I'm going to give you an example. I had a kid, Eric, very smart, reading and writing on a second grade level. Mom was in my room every day. She's like, I don't think he's being challenged. He's not getting enough homework. What about geography? Shouldn't he be learning geography? Fine. I was like, look, Eric shit in his pants twice this week. <laughs> I'm like, here's a map of the school, show me where the bathrooms are. <laughs> so folks, my name is John Ziegler. Thank you so much. John Ziegler, ladies and gentlemen. John Ziegler.